gentle with me, please. And it was the same again last year with the summer specials. And I don't know what it is. Last year I was first as well. I was adamant that I weren't going to go first. And then this Come up next year, I'm, I'm going to make some terms and conditions, I think, before I, before I even get started. But no, God put some on my heart last time, and he's, uh, Pastor Johnny asked me, and within five minutes, God put some on my heart, and it's my heart cry, it's my heart song, it's something that I'm passionate about as well. So I've called it God-given authority, and it's, it's just a beastly subject, so I can't just put it into three points or anything it's like a mini series on its own so i've put it into two points and the first one's the faith um how do we get the faith can miracles still happen if we haven't got any faith what happens if we're running on low and you know we'll look at stuff like that and the second one's the authority how do we get this authority does is it just a free gift that everyone gets and how do we walk and talk in this authority but before i start i just want to read a scripture it's always good to start and end with a scripture, actually. I'm going to use the same one to finish on as well. I do listen to your tips, Pastor Chris. Yeah, so. um, and it's found in Matthew 10, verse 1. And it's, it's my go-to scripture every time I pray for someone at home, a family, someone at church, on the streets, um, at work. It's a scripture. And it's just a word, one word in there that really just, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that's not the scripture, but <laughs> someone needed to hear that maybe. I don't know. I know I did. Um, but it's in Matthew 10 verse 1 and it says Jesus called the 12 disciples to him and gave them that's us by the way he's, he's give us the same we're part of the 12 disciples obviously a bit more than 12 but we are disciples of Jesus so he gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and every heal every disease and sickness so that you don't just stop there because Jesus said do as I did if not more because you're going to be here for longer so you don't just stop at diseases and sickness and stuff like that but I know if you're anything like me some people might think well what's special about me how can I speak into something it's just I mean I'm Craig from Birmingham not many qualifications directly why would God use someone like me so it's just it's knowing it's something I've battled with for years and years and even now I still battle with um, and people get around me and pray with me it's something I've got much better at as well but maybe this is for someone who's here today as well knowing your own self-worth looking at yourself through God's lenses, them lenses you're looking at yourself, throw them on the floor, smash them, you know, some, might, some people might think, you know, I might, I might be past it, I might be too old, God would have used me by now if he was going to use me like that, or oh, I'm too young, there's holier Christians like Ted and Erna who, who, who God will use, <laughs> massive halos. But, but, <laughs> But you know what I mean, the excuses are endless. I mean, I've, I made up some right cracking excuse. Well, not even good. It's just, I'm not even going to mention them. They're embarrassing. But one of them was a big one for me. Is I sin too much. How can you trust me with something that big if I keep tripping up and tripping up all the time? And God gave me a picture. And he said, um, I don't know if you're anything like me, but just picture some escalators. They're doing the work for you. Do you know what I mean? They're just moving stairs. And... If you're anything like me, whether I'm in a rush or not, I'm impatient, whatever. <laughs> I try and step up the steps anyway, even as they're moving. Some people stand there and they're like, no, I'll rest now, thanks. <laughs> you know, it's just one of them. But I just, the treads are bigger than a normal staircase. And the amount of times I've tripped up a step and I've gone on my face sometimes, it's probably clumsy, but the amount of times I've done that. And I felt Jesus say to me, you know, you may trip and you may fall in your sin, but like the escalator that never stops moving, that's my love for you. It doesn't matter how many times you trip up and you fall on your face. I'm still going to be there for you. I'm going to love you no matter what you do. And then when I was researching this message, I came across something called laminin. I was looking at different parts of the Bible and looking at YouTube preachers. And there was this preacher who was really loud and he mentioned laminin. He got really excited about it, but it was too late. I'd work the next day and it's like giving the kids sweets before bed. It's not a good idea. So um, I Googled it the next day. And uh, it took me about three or four goes to get what it actually meant because some of the words are like four and a half foot long in the, in the Google search. So I found one which I understood. And the description of it is this. Um, the property of laminins is their ability to easily bind to each other and other proteins. This makes laminin a critical means of holding tissues and organs together. It's been described as the protein equivalent of glue. So that's in our physical body. That's something that's literally 
holding us together physically, our organs, our tissues, our tendons, we've got that living in us. And then I thought about the, our spiritual bodies, we're all part of the body of Christ, we've all got different ministries, we all make up one body. You know, these different ministries might be anointed in these ministries, so God uses us more in these ministries. That's a different preach for a different time, I think, but the point is we're all one body. And if we keep God at the centre like that laminin, it's going to keep us together. But I'm quite a visual person and I wanted to know what it looked like. So I went back to Google and I was like, I wonder what laminin looks like. And if you've got a picture on the screen, that's what it looks like. You might call it a coincidence, but I don't. <laughs> uh, I think that's a God incidence. So if you ever think that you're not good enough, it's just knowing your own self-worth. It's knowing that you've literally got a cross inside us, that laminin, holding us together physically and spiritually. So if you ever think that you sin too much, you go for all them excuses in your head. You're listening to the whispers of the devil. That's what they are, they're just lies. Just know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and he loves you so much. Romans 8 verses 38 to 39, that says, For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, so he's covered everything, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So please don't listen to these lines, lies that you, whisp you hear whispering about, you're not good enough, you're too old, you're too young, you're this, you're that. Absolute rubbish. And that's exactly why God can use us. That's why he trusts us with that authority. It's just knowing our self-worth and living how he sees us. And because we've got that authority, how we activate it is through stepping out in faith. And that links me to point one, the faith. But we'll just pray before we get into that. Thank you, Lord, for this honour and privilege to come and bring what you've put on my heart. Thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit's here, Lord, through the worship already. It's like you, you, just, you can sense you so strongly, Lord. Lord, we pray for miracles. Lord, we pray for salvation in this building today. Because you are the God of miracles, Lord. I pray that whatever's of me, Lord, will just go away, Lord. Whatever's of you will just stick, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, this is point one, the faith. And you remember, me and Emma, we've not been Christians, like lifelong Christians, but when we started going to church, there was um, someone receiving, I remember someone receiving prayer for healing and stuff like that. It was all new to me, so I was like, it's a bit weird, this. And... Uh, this woman was really upset, the one receiving the prayer. And I was like, is everything all right? And I, met, I heard the leader tell her that, I think you need to work on your faith. You need, your faith's too low, so you need to work on that. We'll come back and we'll try again. She didn't look any better off for it. She looked, I, I, like I said, I weren't a Christian long, so for me it was like some of it weren't clicking right. So I was, you know, it didn't add up to me. But was she right? Because there's loads of stories in the Bible where it says, Jesus says, go, your faith has made you well and stuff. So you can have the faith in yourself, like you can have enough faith yourself to receive a miracle. So I was thinking, was she right? But then I was thinking about other stories in the Bible because you can't just fixate on one. You have to look at others. And I looked at Peter. I mean, Peter, the, like, a, like a disciple like us, who messes up. I mean, he spoke and then thought, I'm good at that as well sometimes, but it's a different story. Um, he denied Jesus three times, so he's far from perfect. He's, he's probably the most rebuked disciple of the lot of them as well. I remember Jesus saying, um, get behind me, Satan, to him. And it's one of that. If I was there, it'd be like, you just walk away, wouldn't you? You'd be like, look at those trees over there. Just sort of make an excuse to get out of the way because it's a bit of a burn, that one. <laughs> get behind me, Satan. It's a bit strong. Um, but he took it. <laughs> um, but there's a full story about Peter in Acts 9, verses 36 to 41. I won't read it all, but it's about a disciple named Tabitha, and she was a really good woman of God. She used to go out and do good things for the church and the community, and unfortunately, she fell ill, and she died, and so they washed her and placed her in an upstairs room, um, and then they got hold of Peter. Obviously, they've seen stuff about Lazarus, Jesus bringing Lazarus, and they know that when Jesus went up to heaven, he left that gift of the Holy Spirit with us, so the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is in us right now, so they thought, let's give it a go and see what so what, if, what he's done wrong in the past, he's imperfect like the rest of us. So he went upstairs, and he just simply tells us to get up. He gives that authority inside him. Get up. Not Peter's authority, but it's one who lives inside Peter. And she gets up. But then I thought a bit deeper into it, because I thought, Tabitha had no 
Well, she was dead. She had no air in the lungs. She had no heartbeat. She had no face. So this thing that the leader said about, oh, no, you need to work on your face. But I thought, what's going on here? Because she, she wasn't alive, so how can she have faith? Peter, did Peter have enough faith for her to receive a miracle? I don't know. Now, it brings me to another story in Mark 9, verses 16 to 27. And it's about a dad and his son. And his son was possessed with a spirit and he used to throw him on the floor and he used to fit and foam at the mouth, throw him into the fire and his dad used to have to pull him out and he was just desperate and you, you just put yourself in them shoes watching your child like that. Must have broke your heart. And Jesus was passing through the village again and um, he just grabbed hold of him in desperation. I need help, please help me, like he would. And Jesus, in verse 23, Jesus says, everything is possible for one who believes. And then the dad replies in the next verse, I do believe. So we've seen Jesus do these miracles. He's, see, he's seen the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame get up. He's seen all that. But in, in the same breath he says, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. So he was doubting for his situation. I wonder how many people are here who believe because they've seen people get healed. They've seen people get they hear testimonies of healings, people's shoulders and breakthroughs in families, but not in my situation. I've got a bit of got a bit of unbelief with this you need to know that your doubts will not disqualify your miracle your doubts definitely will not disqualify your miracle that boy still received healing that dad saw healing in that family he saw a miracle happen even though he doubted and, and a lot of people know someone called Craig Grishel a pastor in, in America called Life Big Church called Life Church and he says the strongest faith isn't a faith that never doubts the strongest faith is a faith that grows through your doubts. So if you are in that situation where you're like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on because their health's improving, their finances, finances are improving. I'm praying for all this myself and I'm really happy for them. But for me, my health's getting worse. God can still grow your faith, faith in them situations. It don't mean you're not going to receive your miracles. Remember, doubts will not disqualify your miracle. Don't feel guilty for running on empty. If you have got them doubts and you're thinking, works rubbish and all this and nothing's going to happen to me because this is just how it is it's been like this for years you're not on your own i can guarantee you that i want you to get alongside people there's people here who you know the story of the man with the stretcher which we'll talk about in a minute the friends who carried him to the feet of jesus there's people here who do exactly the same for you they'll make a hole in someone's house just to get to the feet of jesus so please partner up with someone and like i just mentioned that story it's in luke 5 verses 17 to 26 Basically, Jesus is teaching in someone's house and the door's absolutely rammed. The windows are rammed. No one's getting in. And these friends sort of rock up, carrying their friend on a stretcher. No way in at all. So they climb on the roof. They lift the paralyzed man up. They start making a hole in the roof. But Jesus looks up. I mean, he's a joiner, so he can fix anything anyway. So I'm with you on that, Ollie, don't worry. Both joiner and Mike. <laughs> um, so he can fix them. Well, not me, but Jesus can fix anything. So, uh, you know, he's looking at it. He must have been grinning. And in verse 20, it even says here, friend, your sins are forgiven. Um, and in the same sense, it says, when Jesus saw their faith. So Jesus saw the faith of the, the friends carrying the paralyzed man. So have the friends got enough faith? So the people around have got enough faith to see someone else receive the miracle. So it's not just yourself who needs the faith. It's not just the one praying who needs it. It's the people around as well. So... It's not just that one thing that that leader said. It's not that at all. But that's not the best thing to happen in verse 20 either. I could just slipped up then and says, friend, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> that's what he says to him before he received his healing. And that is the biggest miracle you can, anyone can ever receive. So if you've got doubts, say if you believe and you've got doubts in Jesus and you're just not ready to make that decision or you, you're making excuses, Jesus is there waiting with open hands. He really is. Your friends are forgiven. Uh, your sins are forgiven. He received salvation straight off there and then. And then it's one of them, right? Pick up your mat and off you pop. Probably not them exact words. That's the that's the BIV, the Brummy International Version. <laughs> I would say you can borrow it, but you wouldn't understand it, so it's pointless. So I'll quickly come to the conclusion that yeah, you can have enough faith yourself to receive your miracle. It don't need to be healing. It can be anything. Uh, the person praying for you can have trouble you in prayer i know if that leader prayed that over me i would have said i was relying on your faith to receive my miracle um 
uh, and you can receive your miracle from the sight of those around you. That's why it's important when Pastor Chris mentioned the, um, the prayer request forms and the prayer forms and stuff like that. We've got people like that who won't stop at anything to bring you to the feet of Jesus. And we've got people like that praying for you. If someone rocks up with a sledgehammer next to them, ready to make a hole in a wall to get you to the feet of Jesus, probably keep you distant, but maybe sit close to her <laughs> at the same time. But yeah, like I say, it, come, it comes hand in hand with faith and authority. Um, and to speak in authority and to use that authority, sometimes it can be nerve-wracking, but what do we do first? You step out in faith and then you hit it with the authority, which leads me to part two, the authority. This is only a quick, quick little bit because there's a bit of an altar call at the end. <laughs> you could, uh, yeah. So I remember Pastor Chris speaking about us being apprentices of Jesus and Johnny was the same. He's, he put a picture in my head now and I can't get it out of my head. He was saying, you know, the mommy duck going around and the little chicks following and he called it Christlings and I just can't, can't get it out of my head now. But we're supposed to do and go where Jesus went and, and stuff like that, apprentice Jesus. And he also got told there's two different types of prayer, and one's a petitioning prayer, which is brilliant and still works. And that's, for example, please God, you rem remove this mountain in front of me, I'm asking you to move it right now. And then there's the second type, which is, you know, if we're to apprentice Jesus, this is what he prayed. And that was, mountain, you will move, you will be gone right now, in Jesus' name be gone. And Peter had done exactly the same in verse 42, um, Tabitha, I nearly had prayer myself and falling over there. <laughs> in verse 40, when he, when he tells Tabitha to get up. And like I said, it's not in Peter's strength, it's in, it's in God's strength. Um, there's loads of stories in the Bible where, like, uh, there's too many to pick out because I'll be here all day, but I know with authority, Moses spread his hand out over the Red Sea. And by faith, he took that step onto dry ground when the waves parted. And it does actually say dry ground. Not, oh, we've put your wellies on because it's a bit muddy. Or you, 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 there's none of that. I bet there was kicking sand out the sandals when they got out the other side because when God says he's going to do something, if he's going to say dry ground, he's going to do a job properly. Not, you might be wading for a bit. or But just remember, he's, he's the God of miracles. He can do anything. And I've left it towards the end to sort of drop a bit of a clangor. There's a bit of a catch, which I'm sorry. I thought I might as well drop it in at the, the end instead of the beginning. There's two things we need to use this. God-given authority, that's like qualifications that we need to have inside us. And that's, number one, we need to be a believer in Jesus. We need to call ourselves a Christian. And if, if you're not a Christian here today, it's abso absolutely fine. If you want to ask more questions, please ask questions. But if you're ready, if you're on the fence, you believe, but you have that bit of unbelief, and you're on the fence, Jesus is there, literally, open arms, he's just waiting for you. Like I says, best decision you'll ever make, best decision I've ever made, um, so that's number one. Number two is to have a pulse. And I know sometimes, depending on how the kids have been on the morning, I might walk in a bit, hair up there somewhere, and has he got a pulse? Just about, sometimes, barely. <laughs> but that's what we need. We need to call ourselves a Christian, and we need a pulse. And that's, that's all God's, God asks for us, and that's where we can speak stuff into any situation. Like Pastor Chris mentioned about testimonies and stuff like that, I absolutely love them buy a big book of testimonies I feel my faith grows from hearing things that God's done whether I've been involved whether I've not been involved in the prayer of that or whether Mike's told me stuff from his work and Chris Ollie Emma loads of people here I've heard so many testimonies and it just it just notches my faith up every time I just absolutely love them I just got a quick testimony here and it's someone from work called Paul Daly and he's a painter and decorator and that like a I was speaking before, and I, I always work on my own, and I'm on vibe property, so when I see someone, I'll just try and tell them as quick and possible as I can about God. I'm like, guess what? Do you know her? <laughs> no wonder I'm on my own. I just <laughs> don't work on me that weird. <laughs> but uh, there's healings and stuff been happening at work, as you know, and people are gossiping the gospel at work, and this Paul Daly come to me, an atheist, and uh, he come to me and asked for prayer. And he says, does God just fix people or does he, can he fix, you know, relationships and stuff like that? And I says, he's God of everything, mate. He says he can fix, what, what's up, what's up, what do you need prayer for? He says, I'm not praying here and now. He says, it's a bit weird, that. I went, what, me or the prayer? And he says, a bit of both. I was like, well, I'm not praying for you then. <laughs> but uh, but he, he explained to me he's, he, he had a good relationship with his daughter and uh, I think a few years have gone past and he, she met someone else and they've not spoke for years now. 
that relationship's completely broken down. So I says, right, I was packing up my van anyway, and I was like, right, as soon as I start the ignition, I'm driving, and I'm, I'm covering you in prayer, Paul. He says, let me know you get on if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, no worries. And then I saw him like, a day or two after, which is, like I said, I work on my own. So that's a miracle on its own. That's also one two days after. And uh, he says, um, I got in touch. My daughter got in touch with me and uh, just out of the blue, and she wants to start again. Um, she, she wants a clean slate and draw a line in the sand and we'll go again. I know I want prayer, I need prayer because it's at the beginning again, it's all new. I need prayer to carry on forward. And he says, I've got stuff wrong physically as he started making a list and physically, my shoulder and my back and stuff like this. He says, but I want stuff with my daughter to work first and then, and then God can work on them. I said, he can do it all. So this is pretty fresh. So if we all can be, pretty, his name's Paul Daly, if we can all be praying for it, just keep him in our prayers whenever we're out and about. But the sort of prayer I prayed into that was an authoritative prayer. And like I say, like Peter, it's nothing to do with Peter. It's the one who lives in Peter. It's nothing to do with me. It's the one who lives in me. And we speak out in authority. Like I say, he was just, he was a different man. And he still is now. And oh, it's so good. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> but I've written this last bit down just because it's important. I didn't want to forget it. So I've just written this last bit down. It's just, we need to remember how valued we actually are. To see ourselves the way the Creator sees us and know that it's, our, it, it's in our actual physical bodies, the evidence of God at work in us, literally holding us together. And I'll read that Matthew 10 verse 1 out as I'm closing. Jesus called the 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. We are his disciples, like I said, so we're calling us to do the same. He has equipped us with the Holy Spirit, so it's not us, it's the Holy Spirit doing it. That's how trusted we actually are. Because wherever we go, we carry Jesus' kingdom around with us. So it don't matter what we face, however negative or bad that situation is, or even how bad the atmosphere is, we have that Holy Spirit living in us to change it. We are the light of the world because of who we have living inside of us. And because we have the Holy Spirit light, we'll expel darkness wherever we go. Not me. I know I might have a bit of a ginger beard. It might be a bit bright, but nothing compared to the Holy Spirit that's living in us. We are Christ's representatives on earth. What an honour. So I'll just ask the band to come back up now. And I want you to remember that you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. He is the laminin that holds us together physically and spiritually. So when we step out of our comfort zone in faith, we can speak authority into anything and everything. There's no limits when it comes to God. And that authority is in us because he loves us so much regardless of our shortcomings. Like that picture of the escalator. It's not going to stop. His love will never stop. Even when we trip and fall in sin, it just keeps going. There's three responses today that I'm going to ask for. And the first one is for those who are far from God or are on the fence, who have never made a decision to be a Christian, like that first bit of a catch, you need to be a Christian. Maybe you want to know a bit more about it. Maybe you want to ask questions. But I've just got a prayer here and I'll just say it out loud. And if all you need to do is just close your eyes and just receive the prayer in your heart. I'm not going to ask you to come on stage and testify or anything like that. But the only thing I will ask is just, just to put your hand up if you said it in your heart. It just something as simple as that. So as we just bow our heads and close our eyes, please. Just say this prayer in your heart. Lord Jesus, I am sorry for the things I have done wrong in my life. I ask you for forgiveness now and turn from everything which I know is wrong. Thank you for dying on the cross for me to set me free from my sins. I now invite you into my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and be with me forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I say, while everyone's head's still bowed and eyes are closed, I'm just asking you to do one brave thing and that's just to put your hand up. If you've just, if you've just said that in your heart for the first time. If you're not confident or comfortable putting your hand up, it's absolutely fine. Please speak to Pastor Chris or someone at the front before you leave. It's never too late. Don't think you've missed that opportunity if you leave this building because you haven't. The second thing that I'm going to ask for is to please come forward if, to receive prayer. If you're running on empty, if your faith is running low, like that leader said to the person receiving prayer that you didn't have enough faith, all that rubbish that was said. If you feel like you've had experiences like that or something like that's happened in the past where it's just your faith's absolutely shot, Maybe you believe, but you need God to help your unbelief. 
please come to the front. That's what we're here for, to come together and pray. And that includes the prayer ministry team as well. If any of you are feeling that, you're feeling you need a miracle or anything like that, then please come forward to pray yourself. And the last one is if you need that authority spoken into your life, whether it's financial, family breakdowns, trouble at work or, or healing or whatever, literally where you need anything, anything from where you need the Holy Spirit to show up and show off in your life. Just come forward and let's see, let's see what God does. We've got people, mighty men and women of God here who are waiting to pray for you. Thank you and God bless.